I want to say a hearty amen. You know, the Bible tells us we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. The testimonies are what help us to stay encouraged because we're in difficult times and they're going to get even more difficult. And if we don't learn to give God glory in the midst of our trials, when, when the rivers, when the Jordan begins to overflow, we're not going to have any power to testify to the goodness of God. So the testimonies are now why you have breath and you're able to move. There's a little video clip that we're about to show. And we will continue in the word of the Lord. Can these bones live? I believe y'all sleep in here. Can these bones live? The Bible tells me that God sent Ezekiel in the middle of the valley that was full of dried bones. And then said the bones were very dry. Meaning it looked like there was no life in them and had not been any life in them for years. But my God, the God that I serve, the God that spoke and things were so. The God that said, let there be light, and light appeared when there was no sun even yet. The God that says, let us make man into our own image. And he created some dry bone. I'm not going to leave you right there, long. I'm going to talk about the dry bones right now. Father, this has been a most difficult message for me to put together because I kept looking at the bones myself and saying, these bones can't live. Lord, you're asking something that seems totally impossible. Lord, I don't know what to do with this, and so I ask your power to let me see beyond dry bones. Lord, now as you speak, open the eyes of your people to see beyond dry bones. Can these bones live? This message came to pass as a result of me crying out to the Lord. Uh-huh. Family was on my mind. Yeah. Patrick on my mind. Yeah. John on my mind. Yeah. Nikki on my mind. Yeah. Tilly on my mind. Oh, yeah. All my grandchildren. All my nieces and nephews. All my many sisters. I come from a big family. I have one sister that has 17 grandchildren. Mercy. 
So when we all come together, we are a lot of dry bones. And I was looking on the internet, Facebook. How many Facebook fans in here? Oh, raise your hands. We're part of the social network. We've become part of uh, a, a movement that's going on because we want to know what's going on. So we have joined this network. And sometimes some of the things you see on the network are not pleasing in your eyesight. I was looking at some family members that were standing before a camera with a blunt in their hand. Do y'all know what a blunt is? Huh? <laughs> For you that don't know what a blunt is, <laughs> it's a cigar with marijuana in its mist. And they were busy letting it be known that this is what they were doing. And then there were, in that same setting, some Chirac. Chirac, oh, you even know what the name of it is. All right. Ciroc, vodka, okay. In the midst of all of that was some other stuff going on that I dare not talk about in God's house. I'm looking at dry bones. I'm looking at my family, the dry bones. I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm at home with this thing. And I looked and I said, Lord, can these bones live? They seem dry, and they've been dry for a long time. They don't seem to have any inclination of wanting to be anything different. But, Lord, you know. You know. And I woke up with that in my heart and in my mind, that God knows what these dry bones can become. And I began to find some solace as I looked at God and not the dry bones. Looking at the headlines today, okay. we are not encouraged. For the young lady that just got through with encourage yourself, you better begin to encourage yourself. Because there are things that are going on in our world right now that would cause us to fail for fear. Headlines. I was hoping I could put them on the screen right now, but as they prepare, I'm going to talk about them. Two charged in kidnap, assault of a California girl 10 years old. Two men assaulting a 10-year-old girl. More couples living together outside of marriage. The sanctity of marriage is gone. Republican Senator Mark Kurt backs gay marriage. Man to man, woman to woman. God's moral laws have been trampled upon. Auburn changed grades and bribed the players. 3.9 tons of marijuana confiscated by the Texas Highway Patrol. The Aryan Brotherhood of Texas among the groups eyed in the killing of the prosecutors that just died. Georgia soldier killed his pregnant wife. Pregnant man to appeal divorce denial. Did you hear what I said? Did you just hear what I said? A pregnant man. What is wrong with this picture? What is wrong with us as a people? What is wrong with this nation? What is wrong? Dry bones. Dry bones. We've forgotten our God. Yeah. We've forgotten the commandments that God has given us. We've lost our way, and we're spiraling quickly downhill. Yeah. Economic decline. Yeah. We're $16 trillion in debt. I wanted to write that down, but I didn't know how many zeros went with that. So I had to just tell it to you. 16 trillion. I don't even know what that looks like. And they think they're going to manage 16 trillion dollars worth of debt? Oh, no. 
cannot manage it when American workers are competing against nations like China, whose garment workers make 86 cents an hour. Garment workers in Cambodia, 22 cents an hour. We cannot compete. 9.6 million Americans unemployed and receiving no unemployment conversation. We're in a crisis. There was a statement made that said the biggest thing that Americans fear now is running out of money. Yeah. Running, out of running out of money. More than death. Yeah. You know, death used to be the biggest. Yeah. It's yeah. not so now. People are afraid of running out of money. Oh, no, don't sit there and act like you don't know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Miss one paycheck, miss two paychecks, miss three paychecks, and you are homeless because we are living in debt. We don't know how to live without debt. Thank you where you can for the class that the Lord has brought to you, brought to us through you, managing God's money. We've learned how to say charge it, till we've charged ourselves to death. We buy Cokes and candy and cigarettes with a charge card. We buy things that have no real value. We are paying on cars now. Cars are being financed for seven years. It takes you five years to pay off the interest. And by that time, the car has broken down and is of no use. And you still got to continue to pay for it. We are in an economic crisis. Drug lords are trafficking in illegal drugs to the tune of three to four hundred billion dollars a year. And you think that's gonna come to a stop? You think we're gonna get a handle on drugs when it's a billion dollar industry and it's being ruled from high places? It's only the poor idiot that does the drugs that gets the benefit of nothing. Oh, okay. I know I'm stepping hard, but the Lord gave me this message and I gotta give it to you the way he has given it to me. America has turned its back on God. When your president has supported gay marriage, Yes, he was between a rock and a hard place. But see, the only place to stand is on God's word. You can't compromise God's word for power and, and political position. What God says, he means it. He said it, that settled it, and that's the way it is. We can do what we will, but God would have us to understand that his word is the final say-so. Can these bones live? Can they live? The world is at unrest. They've got that dictator, young Chinese, or Korean rather. What's his name? Kim Chung. Um. They say he's 29 years old. He's never led anything. He doesn't know about how to handle power and political position. And so he's posturing. He's posturing. He's playing with nuclear weapons. He's lining them up and, 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 and fronting them before the world to let them know that he has some power. Well, you know what? The U.S. is ready. 
The U.S. is ready. Is ready to answer that call. Now, what does that mean for us? More war. More war. More bloodshed. More lives lost. More crying mothers. More fatherless babies. More debt. And you think we can overcome this? Can these bones live? Dry bones. Afghanistan. War. Still in progress. You know what they want to do? They want to pull out and leave that mess. They didn't, they didn't handle anything. They didn't make anything better. They may have slowed down some things, but that mess is still going on. We've got Al-Qaeda cells right here among us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, now wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. Ongoing conflict with the Sudanese army. Black folks killing black folk. Mass genocide. Libyan civil war. Iraq insurgency. If we did any good over there, we brought these guys back, and they are crazy as a best above. The VA does not have room to contain all of the PTSD guys that are coming back. They are killing their wives. They are doing all sorts of things because they have been bombarded with the ravages of war. War is not an easy thing. It leaves victims all over the place. Can these bones live? Dry bones. There was another character in the Bible whose world must have looked like ours. His name was Ezekiel. The Bible tells us that God called him in the midst of captivity. He was a priest by heritage. He come from a line of priests. But because of the negligence, because of the rebellion of Israel as a nation, because of their desire to do their own thing, God allowed them to come into captivity. First, it was the northern kingdom, the northern tribes, taken over by the Assyrians who took them away from their homeland. And then you would have thought that their sister Judah would have looked and seen the plight of their sister. They didn't learn a thing. They had a king that God kept trying to deliver, but because he was afraid of what the people might say, he kept going back into dry land and having an attitude of dry bones. And finally, Judah was captured. Nebuchadnezzar came along. All he had to do was starve him out. He placed that city under a siege. Anybody know what a siege is? A siege is where the city is surrounded. You cut off all food supply. You cut off all water. You cut off everything that's necessary for daily living. Eventually, they became cannibals. Moms were eating their babies. They had no food. They were hungry. They were starving. Dry bones. And all it, Nebuchadnezzar had to do was just wait them out. And they got so tired of being cooped up in that city that they thought was fortified against all invaders, that they began to run out of it. And they were captured. Nebuchadnezzar came along and just took them back to Babylon. <laughs> Jeremiah had forewarned them. Isaiah had forewarned them. I think Zaph Zaphaniah. And now we got Ezekiel. And you know what? When you have a message from the Lord, <clears throat> the, 
the Lord will not spare you. He will not spare you. You would think you would be covered. When the Lord wants to get a message across, he will use whomever he desires. And you will find yourselves at the hand of all kind of suffering. But remember, God is still God. He is sovereign, and he knows what he is doing. And so for Ezekiel, even Ezekiel, wife who died, God would not allow him to mourn her. He wanted to show Israel how he felt about their idolatry. Ezekiel still had a job to do. And when it was looking like everything was lost and all hope was gone, then God called him in the spirit and set him in the midst of dry bones. And he said, oh, son of man, what do you see here? Dry bones. Very dry bones. And God asked him the question, can these bones live? And now it seems like he would have been able to say, yeah, Lord. But he had seen pain, felt pain, suffering himself, and watching his nation being taken over by a hostile nation. The king had been put in a position where he saw his own children slaughtered before his eyes, and then they put his eyes out, Zedekiah, and took him to Babylon. So the last thing he saw was his children being killed. But God had tried to deliver him time and time again. He sought help for Egypt, but that didn't help Egypt. Hey, you can't rely on man. You can't trust in princesses. All these folks in high places, you better reach up higher to the almighty God who's able to save. But God in his infinite, infinite mercy still loved his people. But there was something that was said that just kind of caught me. It says God did not deliver Israel because of their plight. He delivered them because of his name. Oh, turn with me to Ezekiel 36, please. Ezekiel 36. Verse 21. It says, but I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whether they went. Even when they were in captivity, they would not uphold God in their presence. They began to do everything that the heathen were doing. God sent them there to really be a witness for the heathen. And then he said in verse 23, I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them. The heathen already did not know God, but the people of God that were supposed to know God did even worse. Oh, we're going to talk about us in a minute. Just bear with me. This is not a shout message. The Bible says, cry loud and spare not. Tell my people of their sins. And I don't stand here with a haughty attitude. I am so humbled. So as Ezekiel stood in the valley amongst the dry bones, the Lord said, prophesy. Okay, we get a little caught up on that word. It simply means tell it. Tell it. Declare it. Tell them, thus saith the Lord. Tell them what God has to say. Tell them. He didn't tell Ezekiel to go and try and put any bones together. He said, prophesy to these bones. He said, speak to the bones. 
oh, sometimes God tells us to do things that seem a little silly, yeah. right? And, they, and, 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 and we feel like they would make us look ridiculous if we did it. But trust my creator yeah. who yeah. created us from the beginning is yeah. able to recreate us. Yeah. And his, as he prophesied to the bones, the bones begin to move. The bones begin to shake and rumble. The bones begin to take different forms. So the toe bone became connected to the foot bone. And the foot bone became connected to the ankle bone. And the ankle bone became connected to the shin bone. And the shin bone became connected to the kneecap bone. And the kneecap bone became connected to the thigh bone. Yeah. I'm trying not to sing this. Yeah. I'm trying to tell it. But it gets a little lyrics to it. <laughs> and said the thigh bone connected to the tailbone. Yeah. And the tailbone connected to the hip bone. Yeah. And the hip bone connected to the backbone. Yeah. And the backbone connected to the breast bone. Yeah. And the breast bone connected to the collarbone. And the collarbone connected to the neck bone. <laughs> and the neck bone connected to the jaw bone. And the jaw bone connected to the head bone. And the head bone connected to the arm bone. And the arm bone connected to the wrist bone. And the wrist bone connected to the hand bone. And the hand bone connected to the finger bones. And thus stood a great army in the Lord. And the sinew and the flesh came upon these bones. But they still had no life. Then the Lord said, prophesy, O son of man. Tell the breath to come from the four winds and breathe upon these people. Breathe upon these slain people. And the winds begin to move. That's, how, that's what the Holy Spirit does. We look at people and we call them dry bones. But when we begin to share the word of the Lord, something begins to happen on the inside. They begin to come to life on the inside. The heart begins to beat a little stronger. The bones become a little stronger. The, the mind becomes a little clearer. The attitudes begin to change, and the word of the Lord begins to do something in these dry bones. As the wind begins to blow on the dry bones, then stood a whole army for the Lord. The Bible told Ezekiel, now look, this is the house of Israel. These were my people walking around hopeless without any encouragement. And I've come to encourage them in me. I've come to let them know that they can live. The Holy Spirit quickens. The Holy Spirit brings life. The Holy Spring Spirit brings a new attitude. The Holy Spirit brings conversion. The Holy Spirit begins to change the talk. The Holy Spirit begins to change the walk. The Holy Spirit begins to show you right from wrong. And the Holy Spirit begins to give you power to do that which is right. The Holy Spirit helps you to treat others right. The Holy Spirit begins to talk about God and let you hear the voice of the Lord. The Holy Spirit says God is good and his mercy endure forever. And it's because of his great mercies that we are not consumed. The Holy Spirit begins to let you know that you were the walking dead, but now you're the living children of God, and you have power. You have power. You have power over all unclean spirits. You have power to speak to the bones in the valley and tell them, bones live. You 
you have the power to make a change in the life of someone else. You have the power to speak to the drug addict. You have the power to talk to the prostitute. You have the power to deal with the homosexual. You have the power to deal with drug addicts. You have the power to help the bones live. Jesus said, I'm leaving. But I'm going to send you a comforter who will be there first to encourage you, lead you into all truth, convict you of sin, convince you of righteousness, and you become my witnesses. God needs some witnesses in here today. We look at others and we feel like there's no hope. And we began to judge them. And we began to speak negatively about their ability to live. There is power and death in the tongue. We find ourselves more willing to kill somebody with our tongues than to speak the word of the Lord and help them to come to life. We find ourselves sitting on the throne of God thinking that we are like the most high and we are full of the devil. God is not only speaking to those who are in obvious sin. He's speaking to the church this morning. We who have had the privilege of great light. The Bible says we have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The Bible says though our names are on the church roll, it's not in the book of life. There are those that may be connected to the church, but they are not united to the Lord. We may be performing all kinds of duties and feeling as if we are doing the Lord a favor. God says, I want you. I want your life. I want you to yield to me. Let me make you fishers of men. Our only duty as Christians is to tell others about Christ. Everything else is secondary. The Bible says we need the Holy Spirit. We can't witness because we have no power. We have no power because we're not connected to the power source. Oh, we talk about him. We declare we we need him. But when he comes with his sanctifying power, then we begin to back up. And we want no part of him. Ellen White, in an article in the Review and Herald, says, unless there is genuine conversion of the soul, unless the vital breath of God quickens the soul to spiritual life, unless the professors of truth are activated by heaven-born principles, they are not born of the incorruptible seed which liveth and abide forever. Unless they trust in the righteousness of Christ as their only security, unless they copy his character, labor in his spirit, they are naked. They have not the robe of his righteousness, 
they are dry bones. As I conclude, this message was probably more for me than anybody sitting here. Like I said, I looked at my family and I declared them dry bones. Oh Lord, who am I? Who am I to pass judgment on anybody? But for your grace, there be I. I know when I was running around doing everything but living for God. And I was big and bold and bad in what I did. I was not shy. I did not try to hide. I served the devil and I served him wholeheartedly. I wasn't trying to be a Christian on Sunday or Saturday. I was being what I really was, dry bone. Full of sin, full of selfishness, lost, unable to know that I was lost because I was dry bones. But you know what? God called me. God called me. No man called me. God called me. He said, Dry bones, live. Let not sin reign over your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Render your members to Christ. I wasn't even in church. Where did that scripture come from? The Holy Spirit called me forth out of darkness into the marvelous light. I don't want darkness to cover my soul anymore. Because I found myself wanting to commit suicide because I didn't know how to handle life. The dry bones had no substance in them. So when life began to beat me down, I didn't want life anymore. Whew. My husband thought I was losing my mind. And I was. I was. The Lord was allowing me to purge out all that mess so that he could fill me. He could fill me with his spirit. I took my whole family and I drug them to church. They looked at me. They didn't want to come, but they came because they were my children. And if the Lord had touched me, then I had to touch them. And as I touched them with the word of the Lord, they began to see something in me that they had not seen before. They began to see me not hang in the club anymore. They began to see me to not have the liquor in the house anymore. They began to see me put the marijuana down. They began to see me live a holy life. I wasn't perfect. I still struggled with sin. But I asked the Lord to help me. Help me, Lord. Help me. And he began to send the word to me by those who were filled with the Holy Spirit to tell me that there is hope in the Lord, that there is salvation in the Lord, that there is change in the Lord, there is righteousness in the Lord. There is a God who's able to save from the guttermost to the uttermost. He loved me with an everlasting love. So much that he allowed Jesus to go to that cross. And while I was yet in sin, he died for me. Can these bones live? Can they live? Can they live? Can they live? Can they live? I'm a living testimony. They can live. I'm a living testimony that I'm not in my grave, dead in sin and trespasses. I'm a living testimony that the word is like water all in my belly, coming up living waters, so that when I speak and give to drink, somebody is refreshed. Somebody hears the word of the Lord. Somebody knows that there is a God in Israel. Somebody knows that there is a God that loves them 
and want some. When I go to that jail, I speak to dry bones. But I see ladies break down. I see tears come in their eyes when they begin to look at themselves the way God sees them. But then I don't leave them hopeless. I leave them with these bones can live. I'm going to ask my AV person to please play this clip while you're looking at this. Search your heart. because I am forgiven. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven for the raggedy life that I lived before my children. I'm forgiven for the mistakes that I made. I'm forgiven for not having God in the center of my life and being an influence on my family. And now I ask him to give me the opposite opportunity to prophesy and say bones live. I'm thankful that he has changed my mind and my attitude and let me know that I just need to speak the word. I can't change nobody. The word changes. The Bible says how can a young man cleanse his way except by the washing of the word? The Bible says the word is powerful, like a two-edged sword. It cuts me, and it cuts you, too. My Bible tells me that the word is quickening. It raised Lazarus from the dead. All Jesus had to do was say, Lazarus, come forth. God wants us to declare that word. We sit here Sabbath after Sabbath. We hear the precious truths. They got to be regurgitated now. I just told you what the state of this union was in. I told you how the world was spiraling down. I told you that there is no help from man. But my God is awesome. to prophesy to your family. Prophesy, remember, I said was just declare 
the word of the Lord. You ain't got to preach. You just tell them. Those that feel the need to have the power of the Holy Spirit, please stand. Yeah. Stand on that. Lord, we've looked at the bones in the valley. Oh, yeah. And we looked at them with an evil eye. Yeah, yeah. Lord, we looked at them and said there was no hope. That they yeah. were lost. We looked at them, Lord, and turned our backs and walked away. But, Lord, I ask now for the power of the Holy Spirit, dear Jesus, to come upon all of us. Oh, Lord, you said in your word that in these last days you would pour out your spirit and your sons and daughters would prophesy. So, Lord, I ask that you would give us prophesying power, oh, God, that we may be able to speak to the bones in the valley and know that they can live. Oh, Lord, it's not us. It's not by power nor by might. But your word says by your spirit. We need your spirit. We cry for your spirit today, Lord. Give us your spirit. Lord, you said to ask for your spirit. I'm asking. I pray that others with me are asking. Asking. For your spirit. Oh God. We believe the bones can live. We know we have not the power, but you do. You an awesome God. And we thank you this morning. If there be somebody here that has not connected yourself to the body of Christ and need a church home, we give you that opportunity right now. He's awesome. If there's someone that wants to connect with this church and become part of that great and mighty army that God wants to use to take this message, let it be known. Let it be known. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I thank the Lord that I'm not a dry bone anymore. I thank the Lord that he is allowing his Holy Spirit to come and change my life. And that's my desire for every soul in here today. Lord, thou knowest these bones can live. You may be seated.